Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and Aslan Nikam everyone. Uh, well, we are looking at the different theories of corporate governance and uh, now we are going to move a little bit forward uh, beyond the, uh, the cost transaction theory and we will be talking about the hazard model theory. Uh, in our previous um, cost transaction theory, we basically look at the fact that uh, there is a lot of opportunistic behavior within the organization and also within society which is reflected in most of our actions in our attitudes, in our behavior and in our different dealings. And it is very important that through rules and regulations and through legal mechanisms, we are able to impede or obstruct or discourage the opportunistic approach of individuals and corporations. Now, when we are going to be talking about the hazard theory, uh, then again, we are talking about the morality challenges and the morality complexities within an individual and within an organization. Now, when we uh, will be moving towards this particular model, then we will be seeing in essence what it tends to encapsulate. Th that managers are prone to moral hazard and opportunistic behavior guided by their own interests. So, this is what I basically was talking about that again, uh, as a human, we have this tendency that we have these moral hazards. Now, what is a moral hazard? A moral hazard is, is that when we are talking about morality, then morality is the distinction between what is right and wrong. But then there is a, another question that what is right, let us say, in one community is wrong in the other. For example, if we talk about international communities, then alcohol drinking is allowed in many countries of the world, but in Islamic states, alcohol is prohibited. So therefore, over there, it would be right and over here, it would be wrong. And when we go across the border, then alcohol is a part of the religion also. So actually, it is encouraged. So we are seeing that is the same thing, but in one community, it is considered to be okay. In another, it is considered to be a religious right. And in another, we see that it is absolutely prohibited. So when we are talking about uh, these different moralities, then there comes to be a certain confusion or a certain thin line which tends to create a confusion and chaos within organizations and also within individuals and also within communities. Now, similarly, if we look at even our own country of Pakistan, then many a times we see that there could be ways of dressing differently. So, in one community, the dressing is done in one way, in another one it is done another way, third one it is done another way and therefore the right and wrong of dressing, of demeanor, of body language, of behavior, of interfacing between different communities, of uh, the respect between the old and the young, uh, of hierarchies which tend to exist, they all have a moral texture which is actually a hazard because sometimes it becomes so difficult to understand. I'll just give you another example that uh, in Islam, uh, one of the most fundamental things is that if we come across anyone, then it is important that we greet the person with Aslan Alaikum. And that is the minimum that we should be greeting the person. And in our religion, it is considered that the person should do it first. So again, uh, rather than waiting for the other person to greet, or say Aslam Alaikum and we say Walaikum Aslam. But in our, uh, in our society, I have personally conducted a survey in which it was, it was enumerated, in which it was identified that in our society, there are 22 different ways of saying Salam. So depending upon the situation, we are modifying our way of doing Salam. And the question is why? This is a moral hazard because it then tends to represent uh, a very chaotic and very complex, uh, a very uh, complexity-infused mind. And why do we do that? Another example, you can see that uh, in our religion, we say that the cleanliness is half of the religion. But look around. Look at around how much of garbage, uh, how we tend to throw things outside of the window, or how we tend to throw things while we are on a motorbike or how we try to throw things uh, when we are on a car or while we are walking. So there's trash all around. 
why what is this sapphire look at institutions we see dustbins there is lesser trash in the dustbin more outside are we playing basketball look at our own homes we don't even keep them clean the question is why why do we have this moral turpitude and these are different moral hazards that we we say something and we do something else and that basically means that there is a disconnect between thought and action and that is why there is this very famous saying that be careful of your thoughts your thoughts become your words your words become your actions your actions if done repeatedly become your habit and if your habit continues for a long time then it becomes a part of your character and you don't even understand that you are doing something wrong and your character becomes an indicator of your destiny so this whole moral turpitude and all of these hazards are a part of life but it is very important that for the betterment of humanity for the betterment of community for the betterment of organizations we understand this hazard moral theory and this hazard model theory which tends to make us understand that managers or people are prone to moral hazard and opportunist behavior now when we talk about opportunist behavior then we talk about self aggrandizement that we are only concerned with our own betterment we are only concerned with our own affluence we are only concerned for our own power authority remunerations benefits and everything but why but why why are we focused towards self only when all good theories say that we are a part of society we have to be empathetic we have to be considerate we have to be flexible we have to be tolerant we have to be sympathetic we have to be concerned we have to be compassionate we have to be equitable we have to understand the needs of others and try to have a direction in which we fulfill our needs but also try to cater to the needs of other people so this hazard is there that we tend to blindfold our own eyes our own mind our own lives and by blindfolding it we basically start treading on the black path towards towards hoarding towards self fulfillment towards self aggrandizement and the question is ladies and gentlemen why we are guided by our own interest but it does not mean that my freedom should tread upon the freedom of someone else my freedom has to end where the freedom of someone else has begun my needs have to be curtailed where the needs of other people are being compromised we cannot move without self discipline without self regulation without understanding of others and that ladies and gentlemen is the hazard model theory these are hazards that we create within ourselves and in that creation we tend to confuse our own needs and our own wants very brilliantly written in the book of dr clayton christensen and his book is how do i measure my quality of life what are we trying to run after what are we trying to achieve does it lead to our happiness does it lead to our fulfillment does it lead to solace and peace does it lead to peace of mind does it lead to contentment or are we just being swayed swayed by materialism swayed by the propensity of materialistic desires of superficiality of itemization of wanting to have more but gaining nothing out of it compromising our relationships 
compromising uh, different solitudes. That is extremely important, ladies and gentlemen. So, moving a little bit ahead, the theory of moral hazard is central within agency theory and also refers to hidden actions or opportunist behavior of managers. And that is what I was saying. And therefore, these hidden actions arise as a consequence of asymmetric information held by the counterparts and opportunistic actions occur by human inclination. So again, just like I was elaborating, that we have to identify all of this. And by identifying it, understand that we are not going to tread on a path which will compromise others and would only lead to our own self-aggrandizement. And this asymmetric information can be used in a negative context. And then we can create structures which basically again lead to my benefit only at the cost of others. And again, the question is why? So this hazard model theory actually does not give answers. Actually, it gives questions. It gives questions that why is it that a few individuals or one individual wants to have everything at the cost of others? And that is the biggest hazard. Going forward, we see the way of expressing the moral hazard may result in the manager's remuneration policy and in the use of various actions such as handling financial communication. So, as earlier said in the other theories, what is happening is, is that through information, we are hoarding information and based upon that hoarding, we are creating opportunities only for ourselves and not for the employees, not for the shareholders and not for the stakeholders, but self only and therefore compromising on the whole contexture of corporate governance and the betterment of all. So, that is extremely important that the hazard theory is strongly connected to the, to the different policies which lead to the benefits of its managers. That has to be curtailed and that has to be looked at and that has to be reviewed and the board has to play a major part that the managers or the top management do not tend to uh, hoard the resources of the organization for their only benefit. And that is a hazard and that is morality being questioned. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen.